Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 20th, 2015, and this is The Kane Kale Show, episode 267, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial on line sculpting. We're going to be taking our digital marble and creating a piece like this one right here. This is an original character, don't worry, this is not copyrighted material in any way. I figured we've been going through all the Riot stuff, and uh, I was racking my brain as to like what we're going to do next, but hey, I was like, hey, I have a... I have a ton of uh, original characters we can go into. So this is Violet. We're going to be doing this today. We're going to be refining and sculpting her out, making her look awesome. But before we get into that, we take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely lane, because you guys have been submitting your amazing pieces to the Facebook. If you'd like to go see them all for yourself, just type in that tiny URL, slash Kale Fan Art. And uh, go like the page, come on over, get your art featured on the show, and come get some cookies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. And let's go ahead and get into a time lapse first. Time lapse first. So this is only going to take like 30 seconds, but this is going to just outline my, I'm just going to show the entire thing rather than explain it. You can just kind of watch how I construct things. And then I'll take you into the actual Photoshop document and I'll deconstruct kind of talk a little bit about how I went about making these thumbnails, my thought process going into them. These are all different characters, by the way, too, just different ones that I've come up with over the years. And uh, I was just trying to figure out which one to do today. And then, of course, I was like, oh, we should totally be doing Violet because she is my favorite. And uh, she totally deserves to be in the spotlight for today's show. So that was why we ended up doing that one. All right. So that is the first one. The other one is refinement. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and open up the document here. Let's talk about those thumbnails. Let's talk about those thumbnails because in line sculpting, this is the principle that we're going to be talking about today. This is the overarching principle that will permeate every being of this PSD. And that is we're going to be working with shapes and then we are going to be transmogrifying those into things, shapes to things. Now you might be asking, King, what the heck are you talking about? Okay, let me just, let me just explain. Let me explain. Okay. So the first thing we'll let's talk about is actually my compositions here. Let's dissect this. So you'll notice in all of my compositions, there's a common theme. And that is that if you were to divide the canvas in half, you have one area with lots of details. And then the other area, you have a majority of negative space, negative. Like we'll put a bunch of negative marks in there. Negative space. Look at all this. What is that? Negative space. Hey, and I got a little light up there. It's kind of showing off the light source, but that's beyond the point. That's besides the point. So what I'm looking for here, as you guys may have guessed, I've done it in many episodes before, but I'm not going to use that excuse anymore because I know that some of you, your best friend may have just come up to you and told you about this show. This may be your first one. So the way, thing, the way that I like to do things is <laughs> I like to think about flow, right? You'll notice there's beautiful flows that are happening throughout these pieces and uh, lines of action, lines of action happening throughout them. And look at this, negative space, negative space. So I went through a bunch of different compositions and eventually settled on our good old violet down here. I really like just this, I think it was really just the flow of like this piece kind of going up and the jacket, ooh, that's actually kind of nice. I want to remember that. I like that, that piece. I think that's something that we lost in the refinement and that is going to come into play too because one of the most important things that we're going to learn today as we go forward is that you always want to save your original sketches. You'll notice over here, look down at my layers. I'm going to go ahead and move this up so you can actually have more room to see them. Look at all these layers here. All of these are just duplications. They're duplications of the same layers. And um, basically whenever I'm going to be going through and making changes or making adjustments or trying out say like a new arm, this one has the arm in the air. This one probably has like the arm on the side. And I do this because those are all alternate versions and they're very rough and it allows me to go back and take a look at them and say, okay, uh, how is this affecting the composition? Did I like this one more or this one more? Choices are a very important point or a very important part of the line sculpting process and creating a piece from the very beginning, which a lot of us know is one of the hardest parts. You, you sit down, you got your stylus in hand, you're ready to go, but then and then your mind goes blank. You don't know what to do, right? And probably the reason I would argue is because A, you're not doing this stuff, you're not doing your thumbnails, you're not letting yourself flow freely. Let yourself flow freely and create stuff. Um, and then the second thing is, is that you're not, you're trying to refine just one piece, right? Anytime you make a new layer. Oh yeah, here's a cool shortcut. So say you have this, 
uh, layer here and then you want to make a different version with her with like bunny ears or something. So the shortcut to duplicate a layer is control J. Control J, okay, hit that and then boom, you got yourself a new layer and now you can add those bunny ears on, right? Cool. Um, so that's what I always do whenever I'm creating a new layer. I want to try something else out, move an arm around or just something else like that. Um, but the second thing that we're going to talk about in line sculpting is this, okay? And we're going to have to create a whole new layer with this and then I will take you through. I'll do the quick time lapse of how we got to this one right here, this current version. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do some real time, a little bit of real time line sculpting so I can show you guys what I'm thinking about. All right. So this is the principle of line sculpting. Line sculpting. I'll just put line sculpt. Tor, all right. So here is the principle of line sculpting. Here's what you wanna do. You wanna create a happy face like this, right? And you wanna put some eyebrows on him and maybe a little bit of blush because he's like devious, right? But notice how I made those values. Notice how I made that lighter value by pressing lighter on my Stylus, right? I didn't take this color. Like, see, I'm painting with this color at all times. That's the most important thing. You don't wanna go in there and like grab this color, grab that gray, that lighter gray, and paint that gray on. Because let's say, oh, okay, let's paint that gray on there. And then, uh, oh, maybe like, maybe I accidentally like put a dot in the middle of like, or like up here on his forehead. And he's like got like dirt specks all over him. And then I'm like, okay, well, I wanna get rid of those. So let's go ahead and paint grab this color, let's grab that gray or white if you're painting on a white canvas, and let's uh, paint that out. Okay, so let's paint that out. We don't want those specks of dirt, specks of poo on his face. Get that crap out of here. And in fact, while we're at it, let's go ahead and get rid of this entire blush thing. What is he, like some anime character? I don't think so. He's some, some cute little quiet anime girl. No way. And then you have yourself a happy face. But then here's the problem. Because eventually I'm going to teach you guys how to do something called line coloring. And that relies on you having created a piece or basically everything like everything that you can see through it, it it's like all opacity there's no like cuz see as we <laughs> here's what I'm talking about like this is what exists on that layer because we painted that gray in see how it still exists there so even if we hit this and then we lock the pixels right this is how i lock the pixels this button right here that i'm circling you click that and then you go in to paint this stuff. See how I can paint these colors? And it's like, oh, this is so nice and everything. But because those gray colors are hidden there, they're predator camouflaged in there. As soon as you start to paint everything else, you're like, oh no, what have I done? Okay, so that took a little while to explain all that. Basically put is that create your values, create your values by pressing either lightly with your stylus or erasing, right? Flip your stylus all the way around, flip it around and use the eraser, okay? That's the way that I like to do it. There is another way to uh, go about, like even if you do mess up and like paint gray and you can still go in and do it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> Almost said something else. Oh man, that was close. I mean, this is a PG-13 program. I would not let anything terrible come out of my mouth. Never, never. Okay, but anyway, don't do that because it's a pain in the butt. Holy crap. All right, so let's go ahead and <laughs> move on. So that is our line sculpting technique. That's what we're talking about. Always might wanna be working with one color, one color because then you get this and you look at those grays, right? You look at those grays back here, but those are not painted grays. Those are actually just lighter versions. Those are more transparent versions of this dark gray. So the way that I got those there was, uh, oh, actually there's another way to do this, check this out. So you have your lines up front here. Like see if I was to darken all these, see how it just darkens the lines? You'll know you did this right if it does that. If you take a gray, anything gray and you paint it in, now watch what happens. I'll darken it and see how it darkens that shape that I just laid in. That's because you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, don't do that. Anyway, let me talk about another way to lay in uh, subtle values behind should you choose to do that. So let's say you're painting with like darker color like this, and then you wanna put in some colors behind it, okay? Uh, always make sure you're working with the same, like the darkest value, like that's the color that you should be working with, okay? So in this case, we just darkened it, so now we're going to this color. Uh, let's say I wanted some darker values on, you know, like in here, right? Like in this area, like that, like that. 
you want to just press lightly. You want to press lightly to put those values back in. Or let's say we want to put like a slight little bit of blush on there, a little bit of blush. So we go like that, uh, but that's obviously too much. So let's go back in and erase it out. Erase it out till we get to the point that we like, till we get to something that we like, see? And then this is basically just a layer behind those lines, a layer behind those lines. And because the lighter values are transparencies that we're seeing through, we can do stuff like this. We can add those values behind it because if that was painted gray, we wouldn't be able to see you know, the darker value behind it. All right, so, and then sometimes what I like to do is I'll end up just merging these layers, but because I'm awesome and I'm smart, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer first. And now we can finally get into the actual line sculpting. So let's go ahead and start with the face. Let's start with the face and kind of work our way or work our way outwards, okay? Because this is probably where you will find yourself at some point, you'll find yourself here. Now, a couple of things that I really like to think about in this stage are, where is my light source? What type of, because we're also working with values here too. Not quite as crazy as when we're going to be like laying in the colors and doing the final overpaints, but in general, we are working with values here. So you wanna think about, uh, I thought it would be cool to have sort of like an ominous, like under lighting or like a reflected light coming from beneath, right? So uh, it will be lighting the underside of her chin here and like underneath the nose here. But then also I thought it would be cool to have a really um, exaggerated and strong rim light kind of happening at the top of this hat, you know, and see how I'm just painting that in, I'm painting it in with my uh, eraser. I'm using my eraser, so I'm not technically painting it in, I'm chiseling away, and hence this is why I call it line sculpting, because you're, you're adding and subtracting. You're never actually painting gray. You're just, to get a lighter value, you take away. You take away that stuff take away and add in that lighter value. So we'll get to something kind of like this, okay? Um, so yeah, I like the idea of our light, our main light source. In fact, I'll draw a quick little picture here. Uh, main light source could be coming from right here. It's a very, very bright uh, rim light that's gonna hit all through here and here and give our character a very cool kind of exaggerated, or not exaggerated, uh, a very dramatic lighting. And then all this light is going down, right? Because light bounces around. It doesn't just go into one thing. It doesn't just shine on one thing and never never see the light of day, right? It doesn't go anywhere else. No, it's gonna shine way the heck down here. This light, right? This, this light is actually like huge and it's up here and it's gonna be shining rays all the way down here. And it's gonna be bouncing up off the floor back into our character, creating our ambient light or our reflected light, okay? So that's what I'm thinking about as I go about doing this. So, okay, so let's talk about that, or let's move on into that. Okay, so because we know that we have that uh, ambient light um, coming from beneath and the uh, principal light or uh, main light coming from the top, we can say, okay, well, there's probably a little bit of that light that's gonna hit the edge of this nose, right? And you can start kind of playing around with little things. And notice how just that little thing, adding that little value in there, what difference it makes. You know, you go from this to this, and it's like, oh, hey, that's really artsy and cool. Wow, edgy. And so <laughs> that's why I like doing this type of stuff. Oh, wait, we're working with the wrong color now. There we go. That's why I like doing this type of stuff, because you can do that. You can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this a little bit. Her eyebrow is kind of getting a little crazy there. Let's go ahead and erase this out. And this is undoubtedly a problem that you'll run into here. So say you've laid down some medium color tones and now you're trying to kind of erase stuff out, but now it's turning it into this like weird mess and you like try to go back in and like fix it, but then it messes up those edges. You know, in general, what I like to do is I just don't worry so much about it. Don't worry so much about it, right? Or what you can do is if you really want to keep it in general, if you have too light of a value, that means you push too hard, right? You pushed a little bit too hard. So push a little lighter. See, so that's a little bit more acceptable, acceptable in my book, in my book, that is very, very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and there's a little bit of reflected light that's gonna hit the underside of this eye and a little bit of light that's gonna be going across this forehead, but just a little bit, just a little bit, okay? But the most important thing in line sculpting is defining edges, define your edges. And that is basically where one material meets another, so, you see how a lot of this stuff is kind of, there's a lot of gray area like in this eye here, in this eye. Well, what you want to do is you want to go in there and say, okay, this is the edge of the eye. Like here's 
the edges. Uh, here's where the eyelashes are. Here's where the, um, here's the bottom eyelashes. And here's like the tear duct. And then you really want to define like, where's the edge of that eye? Okay, it's gonna be right there. Where's the edge of this iris? Okay, it's gonna be like right there. Boom, and now you are beginning to refine slowly. Refine slowly, put a little shine there. A lot of this is very subtle work. A lot of this stuff takes a little bit of time. And like I said, if you're ever wanting to put in subtle shadows, or maybe you wanna like kind of fix something up, just make a new layer behind it because the way that you're working is you can go in there and you can do stuff like this. You can uh, take your color, make sure you're still working with the same color, and then you can do this. You can kind of just lightly lay in that value and then kind of erase it back out without fearing, oh, you're not messing anything else up because that's all you're doing. It's just that, that, it's that layer behind it. And then when you're done, you can either merge them together or you can keep them separate, whatever you'd like to do. But this is the way that I like to do it. Whenever I'm doing like subtle uh, changes, whoops, just made her blind. Oh, that's not good. There we go. Cool. So I'm just defining the edges of these of these uh, facial features. Okay. But all the while, I'm making sure not to change it too much from what it originally was, because that's the other important thing: is that you look at the shape. Look at the shape of this lip. It's like if we were to really outline this, it would look like this. Okay. And while that looks kind of strange. There's something about that shape that is very kind of fun and interesting. And that's something that I, it's things like that that I really like to try to preserve. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna really try to keep that shape in there. Because I really like it. I really, really like it a lot. Cool. Let's have a little bit of, oh yeah. And then that light, again, it's hitting the edge of that nose. It's also gonna hit the upper side of this lip. There we go, and then we'll have a little bit of reflected shine kind of happening there. Whoops. A little bit of that reflected shine kind of happening in there. There you go, there's the edge of that lip. Let's go ahead and clean that up. But yeah, you might find that you'll run into some issues, especially if you're doing like a darker skin tone, um, where you're trying to erase things. You're trying to erase things, but then you do this. Like, and then it's like kind of weird, kind of wonky. Um, oftentimes what I do then is I will just kind of erase in general. I'll just think about it like this. It's like, I'm going to go back in there and add those dark values. But for now, I'll just kind of erase this whole part of the face, almost like increasing the value of the face as a whole, and then going back in and kind of fixing it later. Yeah, there we go. So something like that. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's take a look. So we've gone from, go ahead and drop that in. Okay, so we've gone from that to that. See how now we're starting to create more uh, depth in our piece. We're starting to really define the edges of our eyes, define the edges of the lips. And as you go through your entire piece, you'll do the same thing with the clothes. And speaking of clothes, in closing, Let's go ahead and do a little bit of like this, these chains and these buttons. And just kind of refresh you with everything that we've learned today. So the principle that you're learning today is the first thing that you created was shapes, okay? Shapes, which are these things. All, basically all this stuff, all these scribbles, all these lines, those are your shapes and your values. You've created shapes and values. Now step two, and really where line sculpting comes in, is now you begin refining and defining what those shapes are. What are those things? Are these buttons? Are these going to be, you know, chains kind of going across here? And notice how I draw these in with, I'm still drawing them in with values, but notice how it creates the look of a chain because I'm doing it that way, you know? So you'll learn all kinds of, I mean, you can totally steal this if you want. This is how I like to draw chains. It's just like two lines and then one line, two lines and then one line like that. Again, still not worrying too much about adding in all that detail because that will come in uh, to play later, as you will see. But yeah, that's basically my line sculpting in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and fix these little frills here and define that chest. Define that chest because I know why you guys, I know why you showed up. I'm not gonna let you get out of here without getting some boob action. There we go, all right. 
There we go. All right. Oh, hey, that's looking really cool. Mmm. Mmm, what's up, baby? Yeah, I'm liking that. So that's how we go about line sculpting. So you want to think about it almost as like painting in black and white. But as you guys will see, as we continue through this piece, um, I'll leave a lot, like the finished lines will technically, they'll basically look still kind of messy on the inside, but eventually what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go through and we're going to clean up the outside like almost so, so immaculately, it's going to be kind of funny. And that's going to create an illusion that's called professional work. <laughs> because the difference between a professional piece and an amateur piece is, watch closely, see the edge of this head right there is professional, right there unprofessional, unprofessional. Look at that. Look at how nasty and messy that is. And then you do that and you're like, whoa, your work is so clean. Your edges are so beautiful. How do you do that? You know, and that's really what it's going to come down to. But we're going to save that for another time, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, we're going to go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Uh, before we go, oh yeah, of course, we gotta say thank you to the defenders of the Can Kale Kingdom! Non Plus, David Cariello, and Laura Bashir. Thank you so much for sponsoring my show! I gotta yell so loud here because the music is loud and I like it! I like it that way! I did it deliberately! Because it is celebration. Yes, thank you to my sponsors, those people keep the lights running at night. If you'd like to sponsor the show and get cool stuff, hey, speaking of that, uh, if you want to check out this PSD for yourself, I'll be uploading it to the Patreon. And you can get all the information on uh, how to get that right there. Click that little link. All right, guys, so we're going to call that good. Um, oh, yeah, the last update is I am going out of town. I'm going out of town next week, so no show next Tuesday. But I will return to you on November, what is, what is the next Tuesday? November 3rd? Uh, yes, I will return to you guys on November 3rd. We'll be jumping back into this piece. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.